a freezing wind of hurricane force is roaring through the cabin. The flight crew call Mayday, but nobody hears, and the airplane is headed for a mountain. It sounds like a nightmare for everyone aboard Aloha Airlines Flight 243. This is no nightmare, it's reality. Aloha 243, still up. When crash detectives discover what happened, their verdict shakes the airline business. This accident changed aviation history. This is a true story. The reconstructions are based on an original air traffic control transcript. Some people choose to trespass in that narrow space between life and death. It's a scary place to be. Surfers get there by chasing killer waves. Just occasionally, fate puts ordinary people not just thrill seekers into that same deadly zone where life hangs by a thread on the afternoon of april 28th 1988 it will happen in the sky over this very spot hawaii at 1 p.m aloha airlines flight 243 is about to board a boeing 737 is on the tarmac at hilo airport on Hawaii's big island, the southernmost of the Hawaii chain. Flight 243 will be just a 35 minute hop to Honolulu on the island of Oahu. Serving the islands means that Aloha works its airplanes hard. They make short flights, but plenty of them. This airplane has been shuttling between the islands since early morning. It'll be its ninth flight today. For the flight crew, it's a routine they've followed for many years. Aloha 243. Roger. We're just Captain start. Bob Schornsteimer has been flying for 11 years with Aloha Airlines. His first officer, Mimi Tompkins, is waiting for word on a promotion to captain after nine years with Aloha. Did you hear any more about... Uh... Each of the flight attendants has a long service record, too, but none so long as Clarabelle Lansing, known to everyone as just CB. Well, Mr. Kaino, welcome. Always good to see you, CB. You fixed some good weather for us. I'm smooth all the way. She's been flying for 37 years, since before the days of the first jet airliner. Let me help you with this. Oh, yeah. That's a heavy CB one. is the boss in the cabin, first flight attendant. Michelle Honda, a 14-year veteran, is number two. Jane Sato Tamita completes the team. This is one of the most experienced crews you'll find in an airplane that's been crisscrossing Hawaii's islands safely for 19 years. Circuit breakers. It's made more than 89,000 flights. On this day, only one other 737 in the entire world beats that record. Passengers have no reason to doubt they're in safe hands. Until one passenger, Gail Yamamoto, sees something that makes her pause. But what is it she's concerned about? And how worried should she be? Do I say something? Patricia Aubrey lives in Hilo, but has an appointment today in Honolulu. At first, she opts for the very front of the airplane, in row one. But somehow, she feels uneasy and decides to move further back. She chooses a free seat in row 17. At 1.25, flight 243 is ready for takeoff. This airplane often rattles and shakes on takeoff and landing, but it's something the crew and regular passengers have grown used to. What's there to worry about? Yellow departure, this is Aloha 243, climbing through 3000. 
Roger. Climbing. Though he's the captain, Bob Schornsteimer has chosen to take charge of radio links with air traffic control. It's Mimi Tompkins who'll fly the plane to Honolulu. Most of the flight time is taken up in climbing to their cruising altitude. It will take 20 minutes to climb to 7,300 meters. For many passengers, soaring high over the Pacific is all part of the daily routine. People like salesman Howard Kitaoka in row five. He makes this trip often. When you've seen the view a hundred times, 35 minutes is precious time to catch up on paperwork. The flight's so short that the attendants serve drinks while they're still climbing. They can move around, but the passengers are still strapped in. It's 1.45, 20 minutes into the flight. The aircraft is at cruising height. Honolulu Center, Aloha 243, leveling off at 240. The crew relax. See, where's that National Weather Service weather station out here? Is that in the old tower? In perfect flying weather, everything is following the familiar pattern. Do they? What's that? We have to get down! We've lost pressure! Ah! Ah! I saw a brilliant flash of light and boom everything was going was being sucked out of the plane here's what happened an explosive decompression has torn away 35 square meters of the fuselage we were in a tremendous blast of wind the wind blast was unbelievable a mass of things just went whoosh out the plane you know, hair was up here everybody was in their seat except the stewardesses I saw the stewardess get smashed down in the in the aisle. I could see her hair blowing and I could see blood, but I, that's all I could see of her. Jane Sato Tomita has been struck by debris at row two. Michelle Honda has been thrown to the floor at row 15. There's no sign at all of CB Lansing. I will take control five. 30 seconds have now passed since the explosion. The wind noise makes it impossible for the flight crew to communicate. Now, for the first time, they gain a sense of what's happened. Visible over a mound of tangled debris, there's blue sky, where the airplane roof used to be. The first five rows are now completely exposed to the sky, on both sides of the plane. The initial threat of being sucked out is past, since the airplane's now completely depressurized. But passengers are still in danger. My seatmate was flopping out outside the aircraft because at that point it was just the floor and no walls or seating and so I grabbed him. The cold and oxygen deprivation are both potentially deadly. Just imagine the scene up there. The top of the airplane broken off. The passengers don't have any ability to get supplemental oxygen because the critical tubing that feeds that oxygen is now gone. And at 24,000 feet, with very little to breathe up there, the passengers become incapacitated. That's called hypoxia. If you stay up at that altitude for any prolonged period of time, you become more and more physically disabled. With the top of the airplane gone, you now have 300 mile an hour winds blowing into that cabin. That's three times hurricane force winds. Those people were dressed for Hawaii in the springtime, not minus 50 degree temperatures. Any period of time at 24,000 feet, and those people will die. High above the Pacific Ocean, an extraordinary drama is unfolding. An explosion at 7,300 meters aboard a Boeing 737 bound for the Hawaiian island of Oahu tears 35 square meters of fuselage from the airplane, exposing passengers to the sky. The cabin is depressurized. The explosion severs the emergency oxygen supply for the 90 passengers on board. Unless they rapidly reach a lower altitude where they can breathe again, they will die. Captain Bob Schornsteimer takes over command of the aircraft from First Officer Mimi Tompkins. He begins an emergency descent, dropping 1,200 meters per minute. Its speed now increasing to more than 500 kilometers an hour. 